Let's talk about how to organize your astrophotography data. Whether you're just getting started or you've been doing this for a while, you may have an absolute mess of file organization, files everywhere, forgetting what rig you took stuff with, forgetting what night you took stuff with. I've got an organization scheme that I really like and that I want to recommend to other people. So first I want to talk about how I organize my archival data. So uh, when I'm done with the data set, where does it go? And then I'll talk about how I keep my data organized for data sets that I'm currently working on since I image targets over multiple nights or for targets that I haven't processed yet. So for my, what I call my stacked data, mostly my, my deep sky data, I have a stacks folder, which used to be on its own hard drive on my local machine, but I was running out of hard drive slots. So I've got another computer now that I remote into in my living room and I've got this uh, stacks folder on here. So I have everything organized by target. So every target that I have imaged is in this folder. And again, this is just deep sky objects. I have a different hard drive and a different scheme for doing planetary data. So these are all my deep sky objects. And let's look inside one of these folders and I will show you how I organize my data. Let's do M42 because there's a lot of those. So uh, inside of a target, I have it organized by attempts. Attempt can be a single night or multiple nights. Basically, it's a data set that I'm going to put together into one image. Sometimes I do take multiple attempts and put those together into one image, but usually I had the intent of each one separately before I went and combined them later. So largely I have everything organized by attempt here. So I've done the Orion Nebula 18 times uh, and we'll do it many more times. So inside of one of these attempt folders, I have four folders. Cal for the calibration files, finals, lights, and this pics and site folder. Okay, so yeah, in my calibration folder are my calibration files, which I'll usually go grab when I'm ready to process a data set, or you could kind of put them in here as you go along. I have two different dark files, one for each different exposure time. I'll have other ones in here for different temperatures and exposure times. And then I have the two flats covering this time period for these two different filters. Sometimes this can get pretty extensive. For example, here for Messier 182, or sorry, Messier 82, the cigar galaxy, for my fourth attempt, calibration, I have quite a few flat files for uh, covering different time periods for different filters. And I have quite a few dark files covering different temperatures, in this case, all the same exposure time, uh, but I changed gain partway through when I decided to use a different gain on this camera. So sometimes there can be quite a few files in here. All right, so back over to the Orion Nebula. Uh, so then uh, in the lights, I have things organized by filter. So here's all of my hydrogen lights and here's all of my oxygen lights. And I've recently started to, uh, now my file names uh, contain a lot more information in them. I'll mention that later when I go to my more current files. And then in the Pix Insight folder is where I do all the processing. So I start with, uh, I put all of the calibrated images go into here, organized by filter. All the ones that go through subframe selector, uh, star alignment, the stacked images for each filter go in here. Dynamic background extrain, uh, extraction images go in here. Uh, th these are all, basically I, ha I have folders for all the ones that are not yet quite a single image. Um, uh, although sometimes I'll have those out in the main folder here too. And yeah, and this shows all my different processes that I go through to get through to the final image and I'll give them short little names here. And this kind of helps me keep track of what I have done. And if I want to go back and reprocess some of these images, I don't have to start all the way from the beginning. I can start from the stacked images or from the dynamic background extracted images, or maybe after I've done, um, already on the HDR combination, 
of, uh, in this case, when I combined the short exposure and long exposure images for the Orion Nebula, I can start from any one of these points and then do different processing steps after that. And then the processes folder contains processes with settings that in case I do want to run stuff again, will make my life a little bit easier, like the exact crop that I used so that if I want to combine data sets, I have that crop information already. Uh, the dynamic background extraction, all, where all the points are, so I don't have to go rearrange those. And the point spread function that I determined using a dynamic PSF for deconvolution. So that is how I organize my deep sky target data. First by target, then by attempt, and then the different processing steps and different file types that I need. Now, I want to talk about the stats file because this is really important to keep track of what you did for a given data set, what equipment you used, what dates you took the images on, especially when you're doing stuff over multiple months and especially when you're operating multiple rigs as I like to do, or if you have the same rig but you've upgraded it over time. Uh, you want to know what equipment you used and what number of calibration frames and how many frames you stacked and all that kind of stuff. So I have the stats file and I have, I basically I have a template that gets copied into uh, using that batch file that has just these, these first sections here with you know, date, location, object, and then I go fill those in. So date are the list of all the dates that I took that, that attempt data set with the location, the object, the attempt number, camera, telescope or camera lens, other accessories, so like filter wheel. Uh, I now have a separate category for, for filters, a uh, separate line item here. Um, but yeah, I keep track of what filters I used, what mount I used, and then how many frames I stacked for each different filter and the total time going in and adding all of these up. What the gain was, what software I used to acquire the data, stack it and post process it, how many darks and how many flats I used in the master dark and master flat frames, and uh, the list of temperatures, sometimes this is multiple temperatures, uh, for all the frames in the data set. So this is how I keep track of what this image set was all about. Uh, here's another example from Messier 82. I have quite a few dates in here. And when I do multiple filters, if I'm doing monochrome, I'll list it out by what the dates by which filter. In this case, it's using a color camera and uh, you know, object, attempt, camera, all these things here. If I'm guiding, I have the guide scope and the guide camera. If I've changed equipment midway through, I note that with the dates. So I used the Paramount MIT uh, up until February, and then from February onwards, I used the Skywatcher CQ350 Pro that I'm testing. Uh, and then I will sometimes take notes down here as well. So what frame did I use as the registration reference, the normalized scale gradient reference, so that, again, in case I go back to reprocess things later, uh, I can know what those references were. Like if I want to go combine data sets, then I can go combine them all and use this as the registration reference frame, for example. Down here, I'll also sometimes keep track of if I do another reprocess, then I'll make some notes down here on my right, attempt, attempt two, I instead used blur exterminator and noise exterminator, or um, uh, I stacked it with these different stack settings or something like that. So it's kind of a general place to take notes of, of relevance on the processing of the data set. All right, so let me talk about how I organize the data that I'm currently in the process of acquiring or I haven't processed yet. So that I have a separate folder on, my, on the local machine uh, called backyard to process, which can also include other places to process, but that's just what I call it. It is also organized by target. So I've got, <laughs> I'm a little bit behind on processing and I have uh, quite a lot of things I need to go through here and, and process. But for these data sets, organize them in a similar way. So let's say uh, the Al Nebula here 
and in the in parentheses I have which telescope I'm using so I can keep track offhand because occasionally I image the same target with with both telescopes or I haven't processed the other one yet and I did it on a different telescope this time so put that in the parentheses I again have the same folder structure here and I've already copied in the stats file that where I keep track of all the dates so every when I go through every morning after an imaging session I will blink through all the frames delete the bad ones and then record in here the the date of any frames that get added to this data set that are vaguely up to, up to snuff I'll go th I go through and do a more intense calling with subframe selector and by and by blinking when I have the entire data set but just sort of an initial look let me get rid of the frames that have bad focus frames with bad guiding frames where clouds came through stuff like that so keep track of all that information here and in the lights folder I've got it split by filter and um, here's an example of, of a naming convention I've been using more recently where I started putting the date up here and I do in Nina I select the date minus 12 hours so that all the images that are taken on like the night of the 28th whether or not it's before or after midnight so you can see here we run from before midnight to after midnight but they all say March 28th keeping track of what night stuff was taken on matches up with what's in my log so when I go look at notes in my log for this night then I can immediately tell which images are from that night, no matter whether they were before or after midnight. I find that much more helpful than um, having the date of whatever the actual, like it was, it was after midnight having the next day. The original timestamp is of course still with the file if you want to know whether it was before or after midnight. I have the target name, the temperature. I've been putting the gain in here because I, I switched recently switched gains on my ZWO 2600 from 0 to 100. So I want to keep track, since I did that recently, which ones are done with, with the lower gain versus the higher gain. I'll probably eventually drop that back off. But uh, for now, um, I've got a lot of data with, still with gain 0 that I haven't processed yet. So I want to be able to differentiate those files. And uh, the filter, the exposure time, and then a continuously incrementing frame number which Nina will continuously continue to increment unless you reset the, the, the whole target sequence instead of just reloading it in the morning. Um, so that way I can very easily see, all right, the frame number, and occasionally if it does get reset, I at least have the date and the frame number so that I can tell images apart without having similar names. When a target is ripe, so I have an, what I believe to be enough images on it, a number that I'm happy with based on how difficult and dim the target is and whether I'm doing broadband or narrowband imaging. I just kind of have a number in my head of how many frames I like to have. And this is extremely arbitrary. <laughs> um, when I feel like a target is ready or if it has already set for the year, and I'm not going to get any more frames on it, but I have enough to process, then I will go and put a green check mark for the folder icon instead. You can do that by right clicking on the folder, going to properties, customize, change icon, and there's a whole bunch of different icons here. This this dates back to like Windows 95, I think at least. <laughs> They've got some really old cool icons in here. Um, you need to, I just do a green check mark. You can do whatever other cool icons you want. I do occasionally use this one for data sets that I had or that I'm having difficulty processing, and I need to go pick up some additional skills to process or try a different approach. Those ones I take a little while to come back to usually. Um, yeah, so I'll put a check mark on it when it is ready to roll. Like here's one that I need to go try again on. And yeah, so that is how I organize the files that are ready to be processed or are in the process of being acquired. One other thing I want to mention on the file organization for my deep sky data is that when I name the final version of the file, I have a bit of a naming convention here. So I have the target name underscore attempt number, underscore stack number, underscore process number. So this is attempt number four on the Cigar Galaxy. The, the first one here is for stack. So um, if I go back and stack it under with a different, different settings, that will be, this will become four, two, one, which I used to do more often when I was using Deep Sky Stacker before I started using, using PixInsight and kind of settled on a group of settings that tend to work for me. But 
uh, that may change in the future when I look at different data sets and decide to stack them with different properties based on what they are. And the third number is the process number. So this is, um, if I take a stacked image and do something different with it than I did the first time around. So I reprocess it with new techniques or new processes, or I didn't like how the final result came out. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back and you know maybe not do deconvolution because it turned out too wormy in the end, or maybe go do some earlier denoising or stretch it with a different algorithm. Those each get a different process number. So here I've only processed this one once. So it's stack number one, process number one. But some of my data sets where I've gone back through and reprocessed things, they'll be like a 412, 413, stuff like that. And then the final version of the image gets a watermark that I do in Lightroom. And then a copy of that goes into my uh, OneDrive folder and my Google Drive folder. Then when somebody asks like, so what were the settings for that? Like what telescope did you use for that? And I can't keep track anymore because I have so much data. I can go say, okay, this is M8241. So let me go to M82 to attempt four, go to the finals and open the stats. And I can say, oh yeah, this is with the 2600 on the Edge HD. Finally, I collect all that information into, as you might guess, a spreadsheet. All right, so this is the Excel spreadsheet that I've been keeping for quite a number of years now. It's in alphabetical order by target. So I have in the object column, the name, each attempt for each one of those, for each of those targets, the last date of the data set. I don't have space to include each date in there. So I just have like the, the last date of the last image in there. So I can have an idea of when I took it, uh, where I took it at, which telescope or cam camera lens, which camera, which mount, the number of subframes, and for monochrome data or ones where I used multiple filters, I'll list it out like 22H Java, 23O3, 14S2. Exposure time, if I had multiple exposure times, like I have 300 seconds on this one for RGB and 600 for H Alpha. The total integrated time, gain or gains that were used temperature or temperatures that were used, what type of image this is. So one shot color versus single channel monochrome versus narrow band one shot color using a, like a multi narrow band filter versus uh, this one I did a uh, HOO. So i um, doing a bicolor palette, SHO, Hubble palette, stuff like that. Filters I used the last day I reprocessed it so that if I'm going back through and I wonder like, when's the last time I reprocessed this data set? Is it, need, is it in need of an update with a lot of my new skills? I can go quickly see like, okay, it's been a while since I processed that one. I think the data set has potential. Let me go back and reprocess it. And I'll give it a score of one to six. One is there's nothing really usable in it. Five is I like it a lot, but it's not quite all the way there. And six is I would publish that. <laughs> so I don't have a ton of sixes in here, but there are some that uh, came out really nicely. And I usually have a couple of comments about it, uh, like things that I could go back and fix or just that it was excellent. Now, in terms of my planetary data, I'll talk about that real quick. I have a whole hard drive for planetary. And I also keep my time-lapse data on there now. So again, I have it by target. And uh, so each of the planets, solar eclipses, minor planets, lunar eclipse, as well as a different folder for conjunctions, where I have it by what two things were in conjunction. And for each one of these, I used to order it by attempt but the numbers were getting a little bit out of hand and it was hard to keep track of uh, when I was looking at a given file name when I took it and with what equipment and stuff. So also because I don't process data sometimes for a while, especially for planetary, I was always having to change the ordering of numbers and stuff. So now I just do it by date. I do that also for 
the name of the files. I put the date in there uh, to help me keep track of what file belongs to what data set. Because I'll, I'll, I have a copy of these that live in a OneDrive folder so I can show them off to people. And then I can go see the details and I can immediately go and see, okay, what, what telescope did I use for that? And stuff like that in, in the stats file. Now, I deal with a lot of data sets and I'm constantly making all kinds of folders. So I want to show you a quick trick to not have to recreate all of those folders every single time you have a new data set. One way that I like to make this process go quickly of having these folders is I've created a, a batch file, which is a uh, basically a small text file that has commands for the Windows terminal to do things for you. And they're very simple. Uh, if, I open, uh, if I open it up here. Uh, so this is my text editor. And I just give it these commands of make dir, which is make directory, lights, cal, finals, pics and site. And then I have a processes subfolder inside the pics and site folder. I copy my stats file over from its default location. And then I rename it. And that's all there is. And then I take this file and copy it into my, let's say I have a new target folder, wherever I've, wherever I've got all my light files that I've just, uh, for a new target that I'm starting, I will just copy that file in here and execute. And it has created my folders for me. So that's handy to be able to do that quickly. And then I'll delete that little file and we're good to go. So yeah, that is how I organize my data. That is how I keep track of what I did for that data set, what equipment I used. And this has worked really well for me and could work really well for you too. Thanks for watching.